If we look back over the past 450,000 years, we can see that temperature and the levels of carbon dioxide have moved up and down over the millennia, but always stayed close together. The levels were lower when the Earth went through ice ages and higher during the warmer interglacial periods. But never over these 450,000 years was the level of carbon dioxide anywhere close to where it is today, at 387 parts per million. What is very worrying is that this graph seems to indicate that the temperature of the Earth is going to get much, much warmer. To try and predict how global temperatures will change in the future is now one of the most important areas of scientific research. A leading center for climate science is the Met Office's Hadley Center in the southwest of England. Here, some of the most powerful supercomputers in the world are used to run highly sophisticated and complex programs known as global climate models. The output from these models allow us to visualize how temperatures may change in various parts of the world. Here we see what is likely to happen in a future scenario known as A1b. This is considered one of the likely scenarios where greenhouse gas emissions continue increasing at a moderate level. The rate of warming varies greatly from region to region with smaller increases over the oceans. Continental and polar regions are projected to warm faster with very substantial temperature increases in the later part of the 21st century. This level of warming would have profound effects on water resources, food production and human society. To understand what these changes mean to the Caribbean, the CARICOM Secretariat established the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center in Belmopan in central Belize. Scientists from the region are working with the Hatley Center to develop regional climate models with greater resolution as part of a collaborative project known as PRECI. The PRECI outputs include likely changes in temperature and rainfall throughout the Caribbean region. These projected changes will have profound impacts on many sectors of our society and economy – water, agriculture, health, infrastructure, energy, and biodiversity. One of the main priorities will be maintaining adequate water supplies, as longer droughts are expected to become a major concern for much of the region. Some countries, such as the Bahamas, Barbados, and Antigua and Barbuda, are already considered to be among some of the most water-scarce countries in the world. Many areas are becoming increasingly dependent on desalination plants. But desalination requires a lot of energy, which makes water much more expensive and places yet another financial burden on governments and communities. A better and longer term solution is to improve the management of water resources. Reforestation and more sensitive developments in catchment areas will help to refill underground reservoirs and prevent soil erosion. This will not only safeguard freshwater supplies, but also prevent siltation of our coral reefs. Food security is another major concern for Caribbean people. Studies show that warmer temperatures and unpredictable rains will decrease the region's production of rice, beans and corn. Imported food is becoming more expensive and sometimes harder to obtain. Uh, when we look at the heavy importation of food into the region, this is another issue because we've had a study which shows that some of the major imports into the region, cereal for instance, uh, from Canada and from the States, that the wheat growing areas will be affected. So it might have an effect on prices and our ability to import staples. But apart from that, we import a whole set of food into the region that we need not import. And so we may need to revisit how we produce our food. There is no doubt that climate change will have profound implications 
on many other sectors of our society. Energy, infrastructure, even our health is likely to be affected by increasing incidences of vector-borne diseases. Being prepared for the impacts of climate change must become central to our Caribbean psyche and one of the most important changes we need to start planning for is sea level rise. Over the past 100 years, the sea has risen by roughly 20 centimeters. This modest rise in sea level is already causing extensive beach erosion and the undermining of coastal infrastructures, increasing competition for sand in tourism resorts often just makes things worse on the neighboring beaches. I planted these trees thinking that this would hold it, but the sea just undermined it, you know, so they can topple any, any moment, you know. So, uh, and the fence will, will go. And we're seeing it in, uh, before our very eyes, there are rows and rows of coconut trees over there have just toppled over in the ocean. So we know at some point, you know, it could be the next storm, it could be next week, next month, that this whole thing could come toppling down. Sea level rise is projected to accelerate for two reasons. First, simple thermal expansion of the oceans, because water expands slightly as it warms. The second is more worrying. Images from space have shown that glaciers and polar ice caps are melting at an alarming rate. Measurements taken on the ground have revealed that parts of the West Antarctic and the Greenland ice sheets are sliding towards the sea at an accelerating rate. The dynamics of glaciers are very complex and projections for sea level rise remain very uncertain, though figures ranging from 0.5 to 1.1 meters by the end of the century are thought most likely. There is an unlikely possibility that it could be as much as 2 meters. The combined effects of accelerating sea level rise and intensifying hurricanes could have catastrophic implications for Caribbean islands. Look simply at the western south coast of Barbados, where practically all of our tourism plant occurs. Well, you, all you need is a category three or four hurricane passing through Barbados that coincides with astronomical high tide, and most of that infrastructure will be like a sitting duck. It is almost like an accident waiting to occur. One of the industries that would suffer most is tourism. It's not only the direct physical impacts that we've been talking about, but the increasingly heavy taxes on aviation and the mounting cost of long distance flights. As the world's most tourism dependent region, this is a major concern for the Caribbean. What is undoubtedly the most worrying aspect of climate change is the possibility that we might be close to a point where it starts to accelerate out of control, leading to potentially catastrophic runaway climate change. This very real threat comes from the fact that the changes in the environment that are triggered by warmer conditions also produce large quantities of greenhouse gases. Forest fires ignited by heat waves and severe droughts are already becoming more frequent and could release billions of tons of greenhouse gases that could raise global temperatures even more. The melting of vast areas of frozen swamps is also accelerating and releasing large amounts of methane, which is 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. This vicious cycle could take climate change out of our hands and have devastating consequences for humanity. Freak weather conditions, crop failures and water shortages would cause billions to die and lead to widespread conflicts for the remaining resources. Avoiding this doomsday scenario of dangerous climate change is, in the words of Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, simply the greatest collective challenge we face as a human family. According to the United Nations, the threat of dangerous climate change becomes a real possibility if we exceed a two-degree rise in temperature above pre-industrial levels. To avoid this, they say, we need a 50% reduction in global emissions of greenhouse gases by the year 2050. Scientists from the Caribbean are saying that is not enough. What we need are more 
radical cuts.